Our today's topic is fossils in time and space and in which we will be discussing about the fossils in the fold belt. Numerous scientists have worked with the fossils and they know what is the importance of the fossils in the field of paleontology. There was a scientist named as Rodolphe Trumpe, an eminent alpine geologist. Alpine stand for the Alps. There are famous range of mountains in Europe which are called Alps. So he was the person who was working on the mountainous areas and he was the geologist of that area. Now when there are mountains, the crust or the tectonic plates, these are colliding there and they are very much in tension and jumbled up form. So what did he say? He said that one bad fossil is worth a good working hypothesis. That means if we know that there is a fossil which is from that particular mountainous region where fossil belts are, fold belts are there, we have a hypothesis that what sort of changes were there in that area. Now, what is fold or thrust belt? A fold and thrust belt is a series of mountainous foothills adjacent to an orogenic belt, which forms due to contractual tectonics. We know that when the two tectonic plates collide, they are forming mountainous ranges. And the fold or thrust are the results of that uh, when the tectonic plates are colliding, there are some folds in the surface of the earth and those are called fold, uh, fold belts. Here you can see a picture of a fold belt. This is a profile through the Pyrenees. Pyrenees are the mountain ranges which are present between the France and Spain where the two plates, one is the plate which is called Iberian plate Another one is the Eurasian, when they both come collide, some part of the Iberian plate is going down under the Eurasian plate, you can see that with the red arrow, and rest of the part is collected up in the axial zone on the surface of the Eurasian uh, plate. And there you can see the folds and the stacks of the surface of the earth, and these are called fold belts. Uh, fossils from the deformed zones of the mountain belts are very much important, but they are very poorly preserved. In terms of uh, paleontology, they may not pose that importance that what they have for the geology. Why? Because they have metamorphosed and tectonized. Metamorphosed means that they have changed heavily their shape. And tectonized, that means the, when, when the plates moved, those movement of plates heavily distorted their shapes. With the help of that information, we can reassemble ancient mountain belts, trace, trace the origins of their jumbled structure using paleontological data. So whenever we have a fossil, and that fossil is somehow deformed, we can say that what sort of pressure or the forces have acted on that fossil. And the way it is folded or changed, we can deduce that what sort of changes there were in the tectonic plates at that time when that fossil was uh, in that uh, area. The fossils in fold bell can be of great value to the structural geologist in understanding the rate and timing of the tectonic events. So the structural geologist, the uh, one who are studying the structure of the earth and they can tell, uh, they can deduce that what were the rates and timings of the tectonic events that took place because the fossils are just like a time capsule. They tell us that when this particular piece of matter was deposited in that layer. So 
if that fossil is deformed as a result of tectonic movement that tectonic movement happened after that fossil was already there and with the help of that they can tell uh, uh, tell for themselves that how and when those changes took place a fossil that was originally symmetric but now squeezed or stretched that tells a lot of things for example there was a fossil who had the very symmetric shape there was bilateral symmetry or there were radial symmetry but at the end it was distorted in a way that we can we already know that how this particular organism looked like before it was dead when it was alive for example we have discussed about the fossils and we have seen pictures of the fossils in the previous uh, lectures we know that how a particular dinosaur looked like how different bones of dinosaurs look like if those are somehow distorted we can tell that what is the magnitude of tectonic forces uh, on it uh, an example of this is the delabol butterfly delabol butterfly is the series of fossils that were found in the devon area of the united kingdom people who discovered those fossils they to uh, they thought that these were ancient butterflies but actually these were very much distorted forms of the spiriferoid brachiopods there were two scientists named as hugh and jell uh, they developed some techniques to unstrain the cambrian trilobites from kashmir so we know that himalayas are the region which are very much tectonically active that means there are two plates which are joining together and there that's why the himalayas are there now due to that active uh, tectonically active area the fossils in that area are also affected and one of those uh, affected area uh, was this, uh, which was kashmir was studied by hugh and jo and they discovered that how uplift of the himalayan mountain belt took place with the help of the fossil evidence and here you can see the same uh, trilobite fossil that they discussed uh, the strained cambrian trilobite from himalaya and you can see that a trilobite is normally bilateral symmetrical and it is very uh, it looks like that somehow it is distorted just like you take a picture and you distort it if you just pull it along the length so it looked like that this fossil tells that in which layer it was in the earth and due to that straining movement of that layer the fossil itself is changed as well now the investigation of um, a thermal mountain is now a routine petroleum exploration technique we have discussed that before that in the surface of the earth there is tem increasing temperature and there were some uh, times when a particular rock was under those uh, the effects of those temperature so uh, if the fossil is the in that rock as well the fossil will change color so so is the case in case of micro fossil a number of group of micro fossils change color with changing paleo temperatures and basis of those colors we have very much information uh, especially the people who are explo uh, doing the exploration of the petlo petroleum right so they uh, explore the petroleum and on the basis of the color of the micro fossil they can tell that if petroleum is present in that area or not 